flying speakers is just hanging them in the air. But how do we get them up there? How do we get the necessary equipment up there to hang the speakers? How do we make sure that they're pointing at the right angles and that they're hung at the right height? Who even decided what the right height was? Where do the cables go? Where do the amplifiers go? We're going to look at step by step the actions that you need to take when you're hanging that PA system. Now that I've done it a few times, I thought I would share with you so that if you're thinking about doing it or you're about to do it as part of your job, you know what to expect. We'll talk about tuning the PA and for that you need a good grasp of EQ. So check out my free three-step guide to perfect EQ. The link's in the description. Let's dive in. Before we get started, make sure there is a competent and experienced person there that can get it done. Don't try and do this stuff yourself without any of the training or reading the manufacturer's guidelines that you need. So if most large venues hang, fly their PA systems, often line array systems, from the ceilings or from truss in the ceilings, why do they do that? It's a really simple answer to that question. It's better coverage. If you have a speaker in the air, or multiple speakers in the air, you can get them to play down at the audience in the area that you want. If you put the speaker in front of the audience, right, and it just plays at them, or even just not very high up down into them, then the people further back get all the sound absorbed by the people in the front rows and they get a completely different experience. So we get a more even coverage by hanging the PA systems, especially by using line array systems that have different boxes aimed at different areas of the room. A second reason is that it saves ground space and it keeps the stage cleaner. Space might be at a premium. You need to sell monitor world, you need wireless equipment, you need all sorts of other infrastructure around large stages. You need spaces for security to stand, make sure everything goes well. And if you've got a big speaker system stacked on the ground next to the stage, you can't use that space for these things. By hanging it in the air, it looks nicer. It's not taking up any of the visual, which is really important at bigger conferences. And you can use that space for whatever you want now. So before the speaker system is hung in the air, there is some sort of pre-planning undertaken by a rigger and a sound designer. They will decide where the speakers need to go and they will assess the venue and determine if it is possible to get the speakers where they need to be. Early in the day, the riggers will get in to prepare the hanging point for the PA. They will use some sort of lift system or go up in a gangway or a walkway if there is one available. And they will attach these motorized winch systems to a secure point where you can hang something that weighs multiple tons. The weight that they can hang will have been calculated beforehand between them and someone at the venue who has the appropriate data. Once these winches, these chains have been attached to the venue, they will be attached to a power supply on the ground with a little remote control that allows you to steer each individual chain. That way you can choose to raise one side of the PA, the other side of the PA. There are also manual chain winches that you need to pull on a chain to hoist the PA system up. That's pretty intense, hardcore work, and if you're lucky, you won't have to do it. I've done it. It gets pretty tough on your arms after about six, seven meters. There are often two motors for each hanging point, right? Which allows you to steer the tilt of the array system. You lift both up to lift the whole array, then you lift one up to tilt the array. So how does one connect all of this stuff up then? So this winch has a hook. That hook will attach to a hanging frame for the speaker system, for the line array system. Manufacturers create their own systems for attaching to these winch points, and they have specific instructions on how to attach the chain to the frame so that you can hang speakers safely and get the control that you need. What we do then is we take our first two chains and we have our frame for hanging our speakers. We attach the two chains at the point recommended by the manufacturer and we use the motors to raise this frame into the air. And then we grab our line array system. It's usually on some sort of trolley and quite often they come in stacks of three or four. So we take off the covers and we'll roll the line array system into place underneath the frame. We'll lower the frame then onto the top of the speaker system and using the manufacturer's instructions, pins, shackles, whatever that is, we will attach the top speaker to the hanging frame. So now we have the top speaker attached to a hanging frame with a chain to hoist it into the air. All the speakers below are still attached to that top speaker. We'll then go around the line array system, these four speakers that are hanging here, and we'll adjust the angles and engage any safety necessary on the speaker systems to make sure that they are splayed at the correct angles. 
How do we know what the angles are? The system designer will have used prediction software before the event happened in combination with a plot of the entire concert area to calculate the angle that each speaker should be to properly cover the area, as well as how many speakers need to be hung at what height. Finally, we'll connect up the speaker cables and then we can raise these speakers into the air. More about the speaker cables later. Once we've raised these first three, four speakers into the air, we'll take another stack of speakers, roll them underneath, and then repeat the process. Except this time there's no frame. You find that the speakers on the bottom of the line array have a system which allows them to reattach to your new stack of speakers. Then we just perform the exact same steps, set the angles and lift it into the air. Now, once we get our main speakers in the air, it's quite normal to hang speakers called downfills. These are smaller parts of the line array system which are designed to play towards the audience in the front rows. Because they're closer to the system, you don't need as big a speaker, it's not as heavy, they're cheaper. The manufacturer will provide another specialized frame which attaches to the bottom of your main line array system and allows you to attach these smaller downfill speakers to the bottom of that frame. The last thing you've got to think about is subs then. And in my experience, it's quite normal to see subs hung either beside or right behind the main line array system. It's a decision that's made by the system designer in the planning phase. In some cases, companies sell hardware to hang first the subs on the top and then attach your main line array to the underside of the subs, much like we would attach the downfill speakers to the underside of the main line array. There are considerations around this, such as the actual length of the array system and the total weight. You need to be really clued up on this stuff to be able to make these decisions. So the line array is in the air. How is it connected to the amplifiers? Where are the amplifiers? Depending on space, time available and power available, the amplifiers might be on the ground next to the stage or hidden underneath the stage with cables going up into the air and then fed back down to the linear system. Or they might be on a walkway above the linear system with the cables hanging down and connected. The power needs of each speaker vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, but it's safe to say with a line array system that you're likely to have quite a few amplifiers to power all of the speakers. It's normal to come out of each amplifier in a large multi-core speaker cable, connect to the first speaker, and then daisy chain down into the next two or three speakers. When we're hanging these speakers, usually we get all the cables in place beforehand and then tie some sort of slack to support the weight of the cable so that when you raise the speakers, the slack in the cables is attached to another point and not just dragging below the system. And so how does the sound get from the mixer to all these speakers then? Well, it actually goes from the mixer into a system processor usually, some sort of matrix system which allows you to send your main left right mix in and then that distributes it to all the amplifiers that you need for left, right, subs, front fills, etc. There will be a cat cable most likely run over the roof through any walkways to the same location where all the amplifiers are, where the system processor will be. The system processor usually deals out sections to the amps as well. So you will have one amplifier for the speakers pointed at the front, the downfills. You will have another amplifier for the speakers pointed at the middle and another amplifier for the speakers pointed at the back of the venue. This allows you to alter the EQ cards and the delays to make sure that all of these speakers play seamlessly together and that everything sounds the same across the whole venue. So speaking of that, when we hoist these line arrays into the air, before we get them right up to the height they need to go to, the sound engineer or the system tech will play pink noise or something through all of the speakers to make sure that everything is connected properly and that all the speakers work because you don't want to find that out when it's 20 meters in the air. It's then raised up to what they call trim height, which is just the height that it was agreed on at the design stage to get the proper coverage of the venue. How do you know when it's high enough? Well, two ways. You get a laser distance measure, you put it on the ground and you measure the distance to the bottom speaker and you know what height the bottom speaker should be. Or you get a really long tape measure and you attach it to the speakers when they're still on the ground. When you raise them up, you see the tape measure going higher and higher and eventually you'll see the number come up on your tape measure where it's just touching the ground at 20 meters and you'll know, and you'll know that the speaker stack is now 20 meters above you. Once it's up there, it's time for system tuning. The systems engineer will get a bunch of measurement microphones and use software like Smart to measure the frequency response and the level coverage over the whole area. They'll set microphones in each coverage zone that I mentioned earlier and then play pink noise and look at the graph that tells them how the balance is between the highs and the lows subs 
and the mids, and then make adjustments on that system processor. They'll also apply delay to certain parts of the PA system to make sure that the sound transitions perfectly between the zones. After that, it's just to hand it over to the front of house mixer. You can connect a PA, connect an iPod if it's 2005, play some music, enjoy the system. If you're interested in learning how to tune a system, you can watch this video here. If this is a bit advanced and you wanna know about basic PA systems, this video here.